Il senso religioso o l'esperienza religiosa è innanzitutto un fatto, un fenomeno obiettivo, un fatto reale, non è un'idea, innanzitutto non è un modo di sentire, non solo si tratta di un fatto, di un avvenimento, ma del fatto più imponente e più inestirpabile della storia dell'uomo, più imponente, più vasto, che neanche il fenomeno dell'amore dell'uomo e della donna, che neanche il fenomeno del rapporto tra genitori e figli, perché il senso religioso è un avvenimento che pone, che afferma o che ricerca l'orizzonte entro il quale acquisti senso anche il rapporto tra l'uomo e la donna, anche il rapporto tra genitori e figli. Perciò è più vasto, perfino di quelli. Il senso religioso o l'esperienza religiosa è innanzitutto un fatto, un fenomeno obiettivo, un fatto reale, non è un'idea, innanzitutto non è un modo di sentire, non solo si tratta di un fatto, di un avvenimento, ma del fatto più imponente e più inestirpabile della storia dell'uomo, più imponente, più vasto, che neanche il fenomeno dell'amore dell'uomo e della donna, che neanche il fenomeno del rapporto tra genitori e figli, perché il senso religioso è un avvenimento che pone, che afferma o che ricerca l'orizzonte entro il quale acquisti senso anche il rapporto tra l'uomo e la donna, anche il rapporto tra genitori e figli. Perciò è più vasto, perfino di quelli.
La civiltà dell'amore, fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà. Lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo. Buonasera a tutti. Good evening everyone. So we are actually at the very last uh, event of this year's Rimini meeting. The human existence uh, is an in inexhaustible friendship, which was actually the theme uh, that uh, was the focus of many meetings today. And today, well, today was a special day with uh, the presence, the visit of President Mattarella this morning. And so we are now approaching the end of uh, this year's uh, meeting, and we will deal with a theme that is extremely important for us. When we decided to organize this event, only a few days had passed since the terrible flooding that hit our region. Everyone saw the dramatic images of that event. So we started from the title of the meeting, Rimini meeting because we were really struck by what happened in many communities, families, and in the relationship with the institutions. So this is the reason why we decided to entitle uh, this uh, um, event, uh, a flooding friendship, and uh, um, because we wanted to underline the experiences that took that took place and that uh, were created in during those days, I'm really grateful to those uh, these guests we have uh, tonight, many of whom are not really um, used to talking public, and I will introduce them one by one now, and then we can start. First of all, of all, Veronica Missoni from Forlì. Al suo fianco Michele De Pascale che si Michele De Pascale was the mayor of Ravenna and president of the UPI Union of Italian Provinces. Thank you for being with us. And then Carlo Battistini, president of the Chamber of Commerce of Romagna, Forlì Cesena and Rimini. Thank you for being here. We also have a religious authority, Leonardo Poli who is the uh, priest of the uh, town of Lugo. So we also have uh, uh, someone else from uh, Lugo, Lorenzo Bernardi, responsible for the local uh, branch of uh, communion and liberation. And I would like to say that I'm really grateful for uh, accepting this invitation after he uh, was uh, nominated, I'm talking about General Francesco Figliuolo, who is the special uh, commissioner for uh, reconstruction. So this is a, not a talk show, you know that. 
uh, we don't want to have a, a strong debate. What we want to do is to listen to your stories. Then uh, the general uh, general Figliuolo will be reaching us on a stage, and we will listen to what he can tell us about uh, his uh, uh, experience. Father Leonardo. Well, lately the press said that I'm a priest of the street. Well, I don't really like this definition, but certainly I'm not a um, priest, priest, a stage priest. I'm not used to being on stage. What happened in our region in May was a terrible drama. It's a drama, not a tragedy, because uh, desperation did not win. So we saw a wave of good that has marked our lives, the life of our communities and the, of the town of Lugo. On May the 2nd, there was a first flooding that was limited to a few villages. For two days, I went to work with a in a novella di Castel Bolognese uh, to give a hand. And then in the following days, I was uh, talking about this experience as you normally talk about any kind of event. But then on May the 16th, before going to sleep, I uh, received a WhatsApp message with a video that showed me uh, an area of uh, Fainta where uh, water reached the third floor and uh, houses had no electricity. People were shouting for help. And then I told myself, well, tonight I cannot sleep. No one can. We need to pray and we need to wait in order to understand what God wants to tell us with the what uh, through what is happening so i spent the whole night praying and reading the autobiography by nagai what never ends nagai says starting from today we need to offer a bigger sacrifice than the atomic bomb the sacrifice of the change of ourselves so that we can be happy in pain. So these words, I, well, I think they are a, a, a grace that God offer, offers us. Between the 17th and the 18th of May, water and well, the floods arrived to Lugo as well. 1.5 meters of water in some areas of the town. Flats were destroyed, cars were destroyed. My operational center in the following day was the sports grounds where the civil protection and the Red Cross had set up a shelter center for 300 people. Since we didn't have uh, enough people, uh, they started asking me um, for uh, uh, blankets, uh, for uh, uh, food. Uh, the operators would ask me for cigarettes. I spent 500 euros in cigarettes in uh, 10 days, my own money. And since I have a chat uh, with uh, 800 uh, um, people from my church, I would always uh, uh, post these requests on this chat. And uh, uh, I always get got a lot of uh, replies, people offering help. So I asked uh, uh, young people to come and help on, uh, at the sports ground. Uh, high school uh, students came, uh, they stopped studying for the end of the year exam, and they started work, working in cleaning, in uh, distributing uh, um, meals, uh, helping uh, elderly people, playing with young children. So it was really uh, a very important show of solidarity. When the water started to um, go down, people started to go back 
uh, to their homes if they still had them. And everyone seemed to be ready to help their friends, their neighbors, even people they didn't even know, or people with whom uh, they had a difficult relationship uh, up to the previous day. A chat was created by the young people with 700 people in it just to say what were the main needs. In the church, we created a place where we um, distributed meals for over 200 volunteers that came from many different regions. So in the face of the flooding, we saw a, a, a an expression of solidarity. We could really talk about happiness. The need to save people's things was accompanied by the happiness of helping other people. So we realize that uh, it's something good for us when we can help other people, because that's uh, what we're made for in a way. We were uh, thought as a friendship, as relationship, um, which is not based on ownership. It's rather based on free uh, love, and uh, we sometimes uh, um, forget this. We uh, know that we have a lot of doubts, but when we are faced with a reality that is difficult uh, to accept, we need to be able to listen to the cry for uh, help that this reality is made of. And so we realize that something that should be evident, uh, that is to say that we cannot control reality. And we need to understand that we are not enough. And we have to realize that we are actually weak. So we are poor in a way. So we need to understand that we are not the masters of our lives. We are just the children uh, of someone who loves us. And so the most uh, impressive thing is to look at the other not as rivals or uh, uh, enemies, but rather as allies and friends. All this cannot be taken for granted. In many places, disasters happened, but uh, uh, not uh, everywhere people had the same reaction. So we saw the value of the Christian people in this town people who uh, have followed the church. So I have been helped in these years by the, the charisma of Father Giussani, this a simple presence, humble presence, that has always animated our uh, town with a positive wave of good that uh, has uh, entered the uh, heart and the homes of people. So this expression of good has become for many a source of hope and uh, of uh, um, readiness to help the other. So once again, I understood that the church is experiencing a crisis because Christians no longer go into the world and listen to the cry for help and the questions of men to whom only Christ can answer. Life gives us uh, our uh, path. We uh, need to listen to what life suggests. In this uh, dramatic uh, circumstances, uh, we realize that faith is what we need to live as man and to become the uh, friends and companions of our fellow human beings. Battiato used to sing, I'm looking for a permanent center of gravity that would make me uh, keep the same ideas on things and uh, people. So we do all have this uh, center of permanent gravity. It is our hearts. We need a people that uh, understands the positive significance of life and the positive destiny from which we come and to which we are uh, destined. We, s we lost a lot. And the time to uh, recover what we've lost will be long, but we still have faith. We didn't find that we are better, but we are preferred, that we are called 
that we are privileged, that we are more aware of what we have been given is the ability to encounter, to meet the good of everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father Leo. Thank you because uh, you spoke a very, in a very concrete way uh, of some of the things that actually emerged in many different sessions of the Rimini meeting. So from the very beginning, we have always talked about this inexhaustible friendship uh, that uh, is inexhaustible because the source of this uh, friendship is inexhaustible. Veronica, Veronica, thank you for being here today. I know that you wanted to well, you're not very happy to speak on a stage in front of all these people, this I know. But anyway, you have the floor. I'm not used. I hope uh, to speak in public. Well, I read a sentence that my um, husband has chosen for our wedding invitation, and, and it is a sentence by Father Vincent Nigel, and it says, I had no doubt what to ask. I said, Lord, you know that I will forget to follow you and depend on you. You also know that I will not turn to you as a child can if I feel I can do it alone. So you will always have to break my heart by keeping me poor and humble, capable of nothing apart from you. It's a beautiful sentence, but I've always seen it uh, in a way as a veiled threat. From the very evening of the flood, when we suddenly saw ourselves running away from our house with our little girls, I began to understand the importance of this sentence. From one moment to the next, I went from having my perfect house and my perfect family to have nothing left, not even my underwear. So it was uh, as if uh, everything had been ripped away. We uh, went from laughing to crying uh, to a disbelieving sil silence. We won't forget the faces of our little girls. Uh, Rebecca, who was three years old, said, a wolf came into our house and dirtied everything with mud and glue. So this tear led me from the very first moment to pray, Lord, let me see you. I was certain that he would not leave us alone. And from the very moment, indeed, we were not alone. The first were our neighbors who uh, welcomed us in their uh, house. They played with uh, the uh, girls, well, in the dark because the lights had gone out. Uh, we tried in the morning to have breakfast uh, together. Uh, in, well, that was extraordinary because we were not friends, just neighbors. When they came to pick up a pick us up with uh, uh, the rubber boat the next day, I uh, saw the river of water that had flooded uh, the whole neighborhood. Uh, and uh, three me meters uh, afterwards, uh, there was no water, water from our house. So I thought it was uh, absurd. And I felt it was an injustice. If we had been there instead of here, nothing would have happened. At that moment, Rebecca said, how nice it is to be here on this boat all together. This was, was a point of no return and of clarity. We're all there together. We could have not been there. We could have lived further away, yes, but we could have not been there. My husband, my daughter, daughters. The following days were a flood of gifts, gifts companionship and material gifts. Bea, who's uh, f uh, five years old, uh, had uh, had a bit of a crisis uh, because uh, she was becoming uh, an older sister, and uh, uh, she was uh, given a bag of clothes and uh, toys. And she said, "Crime, Miriam gave me everything. What can I give her in return?" And I told her, "You don't need to give anything her to her because she did it because she loves you and she is your friend." But she smiled and said, "But I don't know her. I've never seen her before." So I realized that's not me who makes my daughter happy. I was a spectator of her happiness, not the long the protagonist I thought I was in the previous months. 
trying to mend the wounds that a child of her age can have at uh, her second younger sister arrival. This made me feel small, but strangely much more safe than before, a solidity that was different from the one I was looking for before. I was uh, struck by an, another aspect, uh, a difficult point, that is to say, uh, the relationship of my husband uh, with his fraternity friends. Uh, these uh, friends arrived and helped us, also in a, an economic level, and I found myself crying on the phone with them, and this made me understand what uh, uh, what kind of the relationship is uh, to be there one for uh, another, but with eyes open to see how God fulfills you and your friend's life, even in the mud. When we were uh, looking um, for what we had missed, uh, what we had lost in the next few days, we realized that we didn't have much, many things for the baby. Uh, especially we didn't have a cot. I received a message from uh, a young uh, man from uh, uh, Rimini who tells me that he has uh, several things for the baby, including a cot. He came to Forlì, and as we unload the things, he said that the cot belonged to Tommaso, his first son, who died the same day he was born. And they decided uh, to give it to us to part from this cot for the first time. And so I thought, you Lord, give us uh, so much. You never leave your children thirsty. Um, a friend from uh, Forlì, Father Carlo, uh, offered uh, us uh, to go and uh, live in the uh, rectory flat. Uh, and that's where we live now. We accepted then. And uh, well, um, I have uh, to go through the courtyard uh, where the young people uh, gather during the summer or uh, the bell is always ringing because there is always someone looking for uh, Father uh, uh, Carlo for Gianfranca. Gianfranca has welcomed us with uh, open arms and my daughters asked her to become her, their uh, third grandmother. And when they see Father Carlo, they always invite him to dinner. And uh, uh, I must say that before the flood, uh, one of my greatest prayers was that they might grow in the company of Christ. And today, I see that uh, this wish is being fulfilled. fulfilled. I was saying that from the first evening, I told my husband that I, that I was certain that the Lord would not leave us alone. The fatigue is there and continues to be there. We're not at home. We're still far away uh, with the reconstruction. And we also have so many questions. Is it possible for us to be sure that we will return to that house, that we will not find ourselves uh, in the same situation next year? We would like to have uh, a clear answer. But in the midst of this, we always uh, see his company at work, comforting us in the most perfect and at the same time unexpected ways. It gives us as everything. I may not have many things, the dishwasher, for instance, to the point of feeling and seeing myself as poor, but I'm happy because the essential is there. The essential for me is to be loved, not to have, but to be loved, stripped of everything, capable of nothing apart from you. Facing problems becomes anguish without his company. With his company, we can afford a word and a dimension that is no longer very fashionable, but which my husband and I have rediscovered, patience. That. Well, uh, apparently Veronica was not so shy. Thank you very much, Veronica. I have nothing to add to what you've said. Uh, I'd like to say that we can now move on because we're really, um, really understanding why we wrote uh, that this kind of solidarity can help us rebuild. Now, Lorenzo. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for your invitation. And actually thinking about what I was going to say on this occasion, I basically um, divided my experience uh, of those days in three main moments. First of all, what happened to me? I live in Lugo di Romagna. I am married and have three children. On the 17th of May, my house at about 1 a.m., my house flooded. I remember we were uh, awake in that moment. We 
desperately try to try and in a way cope with the situation, but we understood that that situation was much bigger than we were. It was impossible to to stop, and we understood that when the water started uh, basically uh, emerging from the floor. In those moments, I was with my wife, and it was clear to me that faced with such was such a thing I was impotent. I mean, what was happening was so big, much bigger than uh, than me, than us, that I could do nothing. And uh, actually, I went to bed because actually we didn't, with a lot of anguish, because we didn't know the day after um, till, uh, um, I mean, the, the water, where the water could have come. But also with a question, I had a desire that there was a sense, there was a meaning of this, uh, and not uh, just oppression, even if actually it was really oppressive. And so the day after, the next morning, at about 5 a.m., uh, when I woke up, there were about 50 centimeters water uh, on the ground floor. We have my kitchen, our kitchen, laundry, living room, everything. We've up. I mean, the consequence that you can imagine. The second step is basically what I saw in action during those days. Soon after, starting from the Friday morning when the water started to go down, and actually days of fall fatigue started. However, at the same time, I also started seeing a, a show, a real show of gratuitousness that was described also by, by my previous speakers, but I'd like just to give you some examples that pertain to my personal experience. I saw a whole group of uh, uh, friends, family members, work colleagues, hundreds of volunteers, uh, people uh, who were strangers to me, who, for example, hosted our children day at night, who uh, gave, me, gave us the possibility of washing, uh, uh, of having a shower, some of them actually took care of uh, our household appliances. Actually, I brought them to the company where I work and my colleagues uh, uh, took care of them. And I remember that there were uh, many strangers, many volunteers who were strangers. And there were two girls who on the Saturday had to clean the bathroom uh, with 70, well, we had 70 centimeters water. Actually, she has a toothbrush. Uh, and basically, she uh, would uh, clean all the divisions between uh, the tiles in the uh, in the bathroom. Actually, on that occasion, I um, started uh, looking at the smile of these two volunteers whom I didn't know, who were cleaning basically my tiles in the bathroom. And actually, at that moment, I soon understood that something great was happening. And the first thing that was happening was that I rediscovered myself free, free of being needy, of asking for the help of people whom I didn't know, of having nothing to defend. And that corresponds, profoundly corresponds to the heart of man. And I could add many other things of the kind. In a, It is as if... Uh, this experience actually concerned my, our family as well as the whole city. It is as if basically the distance between us as individuals sometimes exists. The distance that sometimes creates indifference and is the difference of the heart. And actually, in those days, there was no distance. And this is something that I could see in two aspects, something that I grasped in two aspects. For ex the first one was that the other person whom you knew, so for example, your neighbor, had to deal directly with us. I mean, his problem, their problem concerned us, concerned me directly. And this was clear to see. It was clear to see that the nature of man is basically to take care of the other, as the communion and liberation movement has always taught us. But this is something that I experienced also in a personal moment. For example, when it, the time came to, that we had to throw away <laughs> things uh, that were damaged, we could immediately understand whether those things were damaged or not, whether they were useful or not within this experience which uh, was also beauty. Within this beauty, which I experienced along with the fatigue, a question came up in me and some friends. Who prevents us from living like this uh, every day? How can we treat ourselves, uh, always treat ourselves, and not only in certain uh, moments? And so we invited David Prosperi to Lugo for a meeting. 
And I'd like to read out uh, an excerpt which has uh, really struck me. On that occasion, he said, and I quote, the moment we become autonomous and independent, that we think that we no longer need this place, that we do no longer need this education, well, the mud starts to settle again and solidify, and we don't even realize it. In these moments, more than ever, we realize the importance and the urgency for our lives, not only in the immediacy of the emergency, but always, and paradoxically, even when there is no emergency, we realize the importance of this ethnic guided companionship, that is to say, our friendship. Because tomorrow, we will not need people to come and clean the walls of our homes, but we do need this cleaning of our hearts. And this leads me to my last aspect. I wondered what is left for us today, of these days, of the days that we experienced. And there are two things that I would like to kind of uh, um, fix from my experience. The first one is the following. If in those days of the, in the days of the flood, the fact that I needed the other was necessary to get back on my feet, now that my house is livable, because we, we've gone back uh, to live there, I can say that the flood in its deepest aspect has given flesh to a point that is also a path. That is to say, to be myself, I still need you. I need you now. And then there's another point, and I would like to basically conclude with this fact. Um, the fact happened um, a week ago, mid-August. A friend of mine had left her home in Lugo following the flood, and she moved. She had moved to a relative's house in a neighboring municipality. They had not suffered any damages. And so after the first few days, she had gone back to clean the house. Um, but there were some things that uh, still prevented her to come back home, and so she decided to, in a way, continue staying at her relatives. Uh, however, weeks began to pass, and she would not. She was not coming back to her home, and the more time passed, the clearer the midterm problems and damages began to appear. So, for example, the wooden parquet, the wooden floor starting to, in a way, uh, get coming away, walls to be repainted, damages to the kitchen, electrical system that was not working properly, and so on. And so the, the hidden burden of having to deal with all these problems, uh, sometimes you do not even know where to start. Uh, because of all these problems, my friend decided not to come back home. And basically, she suffered this much less. And then, uh, mid-August, on the 15th of August, we were at the beach, and a friend of hers who had sensed this malaise, in a way, um, tried to break the distance between him and the friend, and basically asked her if we could help her, if we could keep her company in looking at the various technical and non-technical aspects so that she could come back home. And so, mid-August, uh, on the beach, uh, four to five uh, um, people, a small A team of friends. Uh, one is an architect, a carpenter, a floor carpenter. And uh, the following day, they basically met at the house of this friend of mine to help her. And last Saturday, they painted the house. So, the first point uh, that I bring with my heart is basically the fact that I still need you. That's sure, but I also need a gaze, the same gaze that that friend had vis-a-vis -vis my friend, the one who could not enter her home. A gaze that basically um, really leaves no one alone, a gaze that rebuilds houses, and a gaze that helps us build, rebuild people, first and foremost. Thank you. Grazie, Lorenzo. Thank you very much, Lorenzo. And thanks uh, to uh, Don Leonardo, Veronica, and Lorenzo for bringing your experience. I think this can apply to everybody, also f for those who have not experienced uh, uh, a flooding. Because as you said, actually, this is something that basically concerns uh, 
um, everybody live this morning. President Mattarella mentioned the title of a past edition of the meeting, You Are a Good for Me. And this is a reason for hope because it is not uh, in the first place, it is not necessary for institutions uh, to move in the first place. However, institutions are there, they were uh, on the front line, they were called upon to intervene for businesses and also for the life of mayors. And so I would now like to ask Carlo Battistini, who is the president of the Chamber of Commerce, of the local Chamber of Commerce, and he managed them to, he was able to see what happened to businesses, to local businesses. These businesses are, after all, I mean, made up of people. So from your point of view, how was the experience that we've gone through and what awaits us in the future? Uh, the area we're talking about is very important for the economy. So the contributions before mine has clearly shown what the personal situations were of those who were directly involved in this wonderful experience. However, let us give some data because data is always uh, very helpful to understand. This is an area where we have 1,164,000 inhabitants. The added value of the three provinces is uh, over 32 billion euros. Uh, exports uh, is over 15 billion euros. There are 496,000 uh, employees. In this area, the territories concerned by the flooding concerns 26,902 businesses and about 9,000 of them were damaged, got damaged from the flooding after first census to say, after first appraisal of the damages. So this is basically what happened in 2023 compared to planned, uh, estimated uh, uh, data of our, uh, uh, um, of this area. So the estimated uh, growth was 1.1% and now we have a reduced uh, growth, uh, I mean a reduced uh, piece of information that is not 0.7%. Uh, and what's most striking is the fact that consumption is still consumptions are still holding, but this is uh, uh, because actually volumes are going down. However, value is going up, uh, probably also due to inflation that we all uh, know. The most uh, dramatic things is the minus point uh, five point two percent. Uh, registered, will be registered in agriculture. In this area, agri, so the um, agriculture has led to industrial activities, logistics, uh, uh, and all businesses and business activities along the agricultural uh, supply chain, uh, which is also very much export oriented. This is the area which has been hit the most. In this uh, area, uh, most businesses are family owned. Out of the 26,000 uh, businesses, about 21,000 are micro enterprises, micro and small enterprises. 95% of them have less than nine employees. So there are many family owned businesses and even businesses with let's say 150 million or 200 million euro turnover. These businesses uh, are very much characterized by family owned uh, capital ownership, characterized by strong cooperation and uh, strong links within the supply chain, which uh, is very much local. It does not uh, cater from uh, 
the Far East, so to say, but rather it uh, applies, it caters to local businesses. And this is also what enabled us to be so resilient after the pandemic because uh, we've uh, managed to grow more strongly compared to what happened in the rest of Europe precisely because of this links and of this ability. So here lies our strength. Uh, it lies in this uh, link of solidarity between business uh, uh, entrepreneurs, businessmen. Furthermore, also associations are very strong and uh, also in the field of social volunteering. This is the context where we are active. Now, what awaits us? Again, we need to start from the data and we need to make decisions. The Chamber of Commerce, thanks to the solidarity of the system of chambers of commerce of uh, the uh, of a bank BCC Ravennate Molese got contributions. These were doubled with its uh, budget, and therefore we um, allotted 2.5 million euros, uh, um, placing them at the availability of companies. Not so much to kind of uh, uh, giving them grants, but rather to sort of recognize. Uh, the social value that a local company has, the value of a company that continues working, that does not give up, that becomes some kind of a reference point for its own territory and its own community. To, and, and a company that also tries and experiment in innovative uh, solutions. To date, we have about uh, 250 applications. We are already um, paying the uh, the money, the resources, and we've even shown that uh, it is uh, possible to show that one suffered damages through an app called Resistere, res to resist. Uh, it's done by a startup uh, uh, through Screen is the name of the startup, and the app basically gives the chance to publish pictures, uh, and the, basically this uh, helps uh, businesses show that they've suffered damages, and that's enough proof for the Chamber of Commerce to give them uh, 2,500 euros uh, for them to restart in order to, in a way, uh, support the value of businesses in the uh, territory, because most of them are micro enterprises. It's little, this is little money, but this is what was needed because we've already paid them. We've done this also because we would like to, um, in a way, recognize one important value, and I'd like to refer to Adam Smith, the founder of liberalism, of liberalism of the 18th century. He was a moral philosopher. He was a professor of uh, moral philosophy in Glasgow. And 17 years before he wrote The Wealth of Nation, he, which is a, the fundamental textbook uh, of uh, liberalism in which he talks about the invisible hand of the market, 17 years before, in 1759, he, talked, uh, he wrote about the theory of fundamental values. And he wrote that what moves man is feelings, uh, sympathy. A man who sleeps or eats in a, in a house or in a building does not sleep or die just better. He does so because he wants to have recognition within his own community. And so sympathy among human beings is basically what motivates. And basically, I associate that sympathy to the concept of friendship which is also the very basis of the foundation of economic liberalism. I'm not saying that this is a solution, but I think that this teaches us that even uh, within the framework of economic relationships and also in doing, even in doing business, uh, there is there can be something that uh, i mean gives us the direction and which does not necessarily consist in immediate profit i think that this is also one of the values uh, which is at the very basis of the strong links that have been clearly shown by what lorenzo and and veronica have talked about uh, based on their direct experience i think this is one of the most important aspects to highlight. Again, looking at the future, 
a very complicated uh, phase awaits us. Uh, there are lots of uncertainties. Uh, however, I believe that we can uh, feel hope. We have fantastic, extraordinary businessmen. They've overcome the COVID pandemic, and they will do the same with the flooding, Pe precisely because our economy is um, structured and characterized uh, as I've just described you. It's not characterized by phenomenal people. However, we now have to profoundly think about an aspect uh, agrica in agriculture, in the field of agriculture, but also in the field of trade and in tourism. We have to look at this situation of crisis to think, to understand not so much what happened in the last 2,200 years, but rather in the next 10 years. We are always confronted with decisions to make in doing business. And so we need to think based on data and not so much on uh, theories or assumptions. We need to base our decisions on theory, on, sorry, on data. And we need to understand where we want to go. Do we still want the same kind of agriculture as it was in the past? Do we still want to grow peaches, uh, uh, pears, for example, or strawberries? or? Should we have uh, uh, businesses of uh, uh, which are so small? I mean, uh, it's right to I mean uh, give uh, to pay them to reimburse the damages. But where do we want these businesses to go? Because they're going to be confronted with difficult with challenges that are going to be different from the ones they were faced with in the past. Uh, this is what we need to do today. We need to carefully think about how we can best invest to support these businesses in innovation, in the field of innovation and the field of uh, digitalization, and to support uh, uh, sectors that already gone through this. This is what awaits us. And to do this, we need to be rational. I'd like to conclude by reading out uh, the end of chapter uh, um, uh, 31 of the betrothed, and he concludes this chapter as follows. One might uh, think in small as well as in big things, uh, one can avoid uh, uh, that course taking uh, a method which consists in uh, uh, thinking and comparing rather than uh, before talking, uh, but rather actually talking, speaking is so much easier compared to the other three altogether. The even men uh, have to be, in a way, um, shown compassion. Thank you. Thank you also for this final uh, provocative thought. So I think it is interesting the fact that uh, a dramatic moment like this can make us rethink some uh, aspects of uh, the uh, business system. The mayor of Ravenna, Michele De Pascal, who is president of the UPI, up to now we uh, have heard how the civil society doesn't wait for institutions to intervene because there is a social fabric that uh, luckily reacts at the same time. Those who have uh, institutional responsibilities are uh, called upon to react, to intervene, but also to maybe uh, observe how this, uh, uh, these uh, natural dynamics went on. The mayor of uh, Ravenna uh, has worked uh, and on the field in those days. We've seen the images. So, well, I know that uh, there will be a lot of things that uh, will need to be done, but I would ask her to uh, make some comments from your uh, privileged vantage point. Thanks, uh, you know, uh, thanks to the meeting, first of all, because um, 
this is extremely moment of a dialogue and then well we wait with the great interest uh, the words uh, by general Filduolo, whom i would like to thank for uh, the uh, his contribution and uh, how he reacted to this challenge. So thanks for this initiative, and thanks because here in Rimini, as usual, we saw all the protagonists of the cultural, social, political life of our country, and uh, almost everyone had to uh, face this theme that is so important. And thanks uh, for uh, these uh, experiences that you have shared with us, because it is uh, difficult to uh, recount this event for those who weren't there. Because, uh, first of all, the, the chapter on flooding, uh, climate events, uh, well, if you write it on Google, you find out uh, so many different uh, events and uh, there are also some events that are uh, limited uh, in uh, space uh, but uh, they become anyway uh, uh, the center of uh, the uh, work of the press for instance then what you said is uh, the historic church of the di quella di Church of Norcia, Castelluccio di Norcia, that symbolic uh, building that we all remember because it has been destroyed. When we have a flooding and waters, floods everything, mud is everywhere, and then uh, water, water retreats, this doesn't leave that kind of, you know, uh, um, emotional uh, uh, testimony of what happened. So our uh, symbols are the experiences of the families in our uh, region, in our uh, city, that went through those very difficult days. And today, walking through our uh, towns and cities, uh, well, they have uh, houses that we can, that don't show what happened. There are uh, I'm, t I'm thinking about Fainta, one of the cities that was maybe the, well, uh, the one that had m the most damages. There are uh, some areas of Fainta, Fainta where if you <clears throat> walk through the streets, uh, you understand that something happened only because uh, the doors and windows are all open. Uh, open. Uh, there is a building uh, that uh, uh, has been completely destroyed up to the fourth floor because uh, water there arrived from the hills with extreme force. And when the provincial police of, the, of Ravenna works in the wetlands uh, on the boats, when they were sent to find, they had boats to go there, so they did go. So they couldn't understand where they had to go because uh, the water had covered road signs uh, so it was uh, the people, it were the people on the roofs of the houses that said where uh, there might be someone who was still inside the house or a family in need. So they actually saved people, um, elderly people who had to um, actually dive underwater and then come out outside the house, come out of the water. So that hill that uh, in the years before the flooding uh, uh, was partially abandoned by farmers, by young people, by enterprises, that hill that had uh, um, a lot of um, landsliding and uh, uh, water arrived uh, with such a violence uh, in the towns around the Via Emilia. And then the following days from the valley, we saw what happened because uh, well, the water flooded uh, Lugo, Conselice, another municipality that is a symbol of the floods, a community of less than 10,000 inhabitants that experienced three floods in 10 days. I don't know that it, if there is a, another example like this in the history of our country. The 3rd of May and 
then again twice on the 16th because of the uh, water flooded from two different rivers. It is a, a town that is uh, above the sea level and uh, over 30 kilometers from the sea, so there was no way to uh, for the water to retreat, so we had had to be pumped away. And this is true for uh, Conselice, but for many other uh, uh, towns in uh, Romagna. These are uh, territories that uh, were uh, actually marshes, uh, wetlands, a few hundreds of years ago, and they now have been reclaimed. And we have also um, managed to make them uh, free of uh, uh, disease. So this was the flooding in Romagna. So it is important to really uh, give uh, uh, give uh, uh, some kind of importance to it because this kind of event can only be faced only by a community. Institutions are not enough. Um, volunteers are not enough. The tertiary sector is not enough on their own. They all work. They need to work together. So if we didn't have the so-called uh, mud angels, it would not have been able to uh, clean up the towns and cities. Uh, I went to a small village, Borgo Sisa. 500 people participated in an initiative, and uh, I entered the house of an old lady, 91 years of age. So she said, the first day I cried the whole day. Then the next day, 20 young people came into my home. I, mean, I had never seen them before, and something that had uh, seemed to me uh, impossible to overcome was actually overcome. So there were these young volunteers, but there were uh, the firefighters, uh, there were uh, the police forces uh, that also did what they can do best. So we needed both. We needed uh, the uh, specialized forces. We needed the volunteers, the so-called mad angels. So. Uh, that emerged clearly in those days, and uh, uh, it is evident that everyone needs to do everything they can, send a WhatsApp message to uh, spread a, a warning, uh, to um, offer uh, their time, to offer food, so everyone could do what they can. So this same spirit uh, needs to stay with us. We are at the Rimini meeting, and I wanted to talk about a smaller meeting, a meeting between two people. During the flooding, there was a, a, a meeting that took place along the highway in Forli in a bar where the president of the council met the president of the region, Emilia Romagna. I was really astonished because it was their first meeting where they discussed the flooding in a bar along the highway. So it was really the image of two people who have a lot of uh, differences from different points of, views, of view. But at that moment, they wanted to work together. They wanted to face together the emergency. So they met where they could along the highway where they could actually um, stop and meet. So that was a very important message also for those during those days uh, where part of the military, the firefighters, and those who had hit by the floods. So starting from here, I think we need to recover that spirit when uh, the news uh, list the themes uh, of the political uh, conflict, they talk about uh, foreign policy, migration, budget policy, and then the flooding in Romagna. No, this has to stop immediately. Everyone has to play their role. I'm doing my part. We need true words. We need to work together. 
those who have good ideas can need to be able to express them without being uh, said to instrumentalize what is happening. There are the resources uh, uh, to um, pay back uh, the expenses uh, paid by the institutions uh, to plan new uh, works. There is a strategic plan to improve the hydrogeological safety of this country. The center of this town of Ravenna was not flooded because there was a, a hydraulic works that was carried out by Cardinal Alberoni in the 18th, 18th century that deviated two rivers that were usual to were, used to flood the center of the city. So it was a, a, a great visionary work. So we need uh, to, to make uh, a big step in that direction. We have the procedures and we need to have uh, all the necessary resources. We need to, well, there, we need more resources that have not been allotted yet um, to reimburse the people that have lost so much. The stories you have shared with us are very moving and each dramatic moment of our uh, life uh, should teach us a lesson, make us stronger, understand the real aspects of life better. So you had to decide what to keep and what to throw away after the floods, but this could be done also in an ideal way with the things that make up our lives. So, uh, well, we are having a lot of tests and proofs to so bomb, bombs in Europe, the pandemic, the flooding. Well, we do have opportunities to improve uh, a lot of them. And uh, so we are called upon to reflect on the meaning of our lives. But there are also so many beautiful experiences among those who have found some answers, but there are still so many dramatic situations families that have uh, damages for uh, 100,000 euros and a loan on their homes for 100,000 euros. Teenagers who already had uh, some problems. Those who actually um, took the final exam after high school this year, they went through the COVID pandemic and then through the flooding. So we need to identify the right measures, looking at the most fragile families. So uh, meeting in a bar along the highway, meeting in Rome, meeting in Vence or Forlì, but we need to meet and find a spirit of cooperation using true words. And when you go to sleep at night, we should just ask ourselves if we have done everything we could to face this emergency and to <coughs> give back these people the possibility to sleep in their house and restart their lives. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michele De Pascale. I think that he um, has addressed the issue of uh, finding a method to talk about these topics. I think the time has come to basically deliver uh, everything we've listened to to some to the final remarks of General Figliuolo. Of course, we're not asking him uh, to solve everything uh, tonight, but thank you. Thank you very much. So good afternoon, everybody. I would like um, to thank the director and chairperson Emanuele Forlani for his kind invitation and for putting together this interesting panel. I've listened to very interesting um, um, testimonies. Uh, uh, Madame Missoni, Lorenzo Bernini, Fada Leonardo. Some days ago, I read that you said that people is ready to give, uh, people are uh, creative and passionate, and actually this sentence really struck me. 
because this is um, the topic of the encounters of the sessions here at the Rimini meeting. They're all uh, about friendship and solidarity. They're all about uh, uh, being a team, as the Mayor de Pascale has just said. He's the president uh, of the Union of Italian Provinces. And I would also like to greet Mr. Battisin, the President of the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you very much for your very precise data. And also thanks for the for all you've done in favor of small companies, small businesses. I've also understood your message. You said that based on the pictures uh, we've seen what damages have been done and we are giving money of course we're trying uh, we're going to try and find quick tools but we also have to uh, have procedures and methods in, in methods in place which are in line with the principles of a correct administration of our state so a fully fledged uh, friendship and uh, solidarity that reconstructs. Uh, these are words uh, that this morning uh, were pronounced, uh, were made reference to also by uh, uh, the President of our Republic when he talked about institutions which should be based on social agreement, so basically on, solid on solidarity. My thought goes to those who lost their lives uh, due to the flooding, uh, due to this tragedy that particularly hit the Emilia Romagna region and those who still suffer the consequences uh, of the flooding who are still out of their homes, like the family of uh, Ms. Veronica and her girls. For me, this is um, a stimulus to do more. Uh, this um, incites me to do whatever can be done to support the territory so that uh, the emergency stage is soon over. Now we have entered some kind of a limbo stage, but we have to go towards the stage of reconstruction. So the events of uh, the floodings of last May were made reference to. They were uh, waterfalls equal to 4 billion cubic meters water and the Emilia Romagna region consumes about uh, 1.4 billion cubic meters for civic industrial and purposes and for irrigation. So basically there was a contemporary flooding of 23 watercourses. This is what happened in this region, especially in the Romagna area. Ever since the beginning of this emergency, I actively participated as a, an operational co um, commander of the Italian Army and as a person in charge of acting for emergencies. I got a call from Minister Crosetto who told me just one thing, please do everything that the Minister of Defense has. And this, is, this was done. I mean, we supported the civil protection, the fire brigades, um, and uh, with the carabinieri and the police, uh, we basically um, sent about uh, uh, 1,000 men and women who worked with passion at the service of citizens. There were 11 helicopters who've flown uh, um, earth handling machines, uh, 60 machines for earth handling, logistics support, and we also did rescue operations for people and animals, for the removal of debris, for the consolidation and restoration of um, riverbanks, supporting the civil protection, supporting the firefighters, supported ourselves by volunteers also coming from other regions and who worked with great passion. I saw many young people, some adolescents, uh, who, I mean, uh, left their books to be at the service of the community. This is something that we heard uh, from uh, many interesting experiences. At the end of June, I was um, 
uh, I wouldn't say formally appointed, but actually was informed of the fact that I was chosen as a special commissioner. And this was then formalized on the 10th of July. I can tell you that the Prime Minister, Giorgio Meloni, has given and is giving the utmost priority so that we can soon come out of the emergency stage so that reconstruction can start as soon as possible and we can go back to normal. At the moment, as you know, 4.5 billion euros were set aside, 2.8 billion euros of which are uh, in uh, um, in the hands, so to say, in the availability of the okay. commissioner. And what have I done? We have so far drafted preparation acts. Uh, we've worked full rhythm every day, uh, collaborating with the territory. We uh, appointed uh, sub-commissioners because uh, our aim is to work in team. This is what an emergency always teaches us. Emergencies are major risks. Risk situation, they happen um, suddenly, but they require multidisciplinary and multidimensional answers. I mean, you cannot have just one body, just one institution uh, capable of solving. Uh, uh, the challenges uh, brought about by an emergency. And I can draw an easy parallel. Uh, uh, I've uh, served as special commissioner during the COVID pandemic uh, to combat the pandemic. We worked as a team between various institutions, also with the central state and with local bodies. We worked on the territory. We mobilized everything. Uh, there were volunteers and there were also citizens. Citizens were mobilized. Uh, and we won the challenge. Italy has become a world benchmark when it comes to the vaccination campaign. So this is my principle. I mean, I always try and establish a synergy with the territory. Uh, first and foremost, to, in a way, create the conditions uh, for safety in the territory. So we first uh, uh, checked what actions uh, were already uh, been were already done the urgent the very urgent uh, actions I've uh, uh, basically published the ordinance this will soon be published uh, on the official journal and this will uh, make it possible to give uh, indemnities to the implementing bodies and the institutions in other words to the ones who did this uh, these works and we are talking about over uh, 20 500 actions, interventions for about 289 million euros. So we we do have the resources. And then we have uh, actions uh, um, for 2024 of additional 124 million euros that we can pay as indemnities. And then we need to have uh, actions for the reconstruction and uh, re in, uh, recovery, besides precisely what Ms. Veronica was asking um, for. So the um, creation and establishment of the safety conditions of the territory. Yesterday, we had a technical meeting. Today, my... Uh, office, my team uh, is actually working also in the regions of Tuscany and Marche, although the actions there are more limited because the very center where the flooding took place was uh, the Romagna area, but also Tuscany and Marche have areas that need uh, to be looked after. And here we're talking about 448 uh, 449 million euros for 2023, and there we basically uh, defined the operational modalities. In short, together in agreement with the region, I will soon uh, um, issue an ordinance so that uh, implementing bodies can act. In parallel, we have to look after families and businesses. 
At the moment, we are paying uh, indemnities to households. Uh, uh, these indemnities range between uh, three and 5,000 euros. I realize that if damages are much higher, this is very little money. However, we're talking about, tr well, we've talked about truth, so I tell you what we are truly doing. We are paying these indemnities uh, for the households of the families that had to leave their houses uh, who are displaced. And I think that at the beginning of September, we will be able to finalize an ordinance for private reconstruction measures so that families can have indications and useful tools to quantify damages and then be paid reimbursements. In September, we will not pay any reimbursement. We will first quantify the damages, and then once they are quantified, they will be paid. And the same will be done for businesses. So I will uh, first, we will first quantify dam damages and uh, I will then ask for resources to be set aside based on what the Prime Minister said. In other words, she talked about a total reimbursement. So uh, the uh, requests for the resources will be asked only after uh, damages are quantified. And then we will have more far-reaching actions which equals to what Mr. Battissini was saying. What do we need to do in the future? Where are we going? Where are we heading to in terms of, for example, the hydrogeological disruption of the problems to our roads? We have five uh, special plans, public works, uh, uh, cultural heritage, uh, environmental infrastructures, road infrastructures, uh, and uh, hydrogeological disruption. We need to find solutions that can best mitigate the impact of phenomena like those that took place last May, which might be uh, which might no longer be uh, exceptional phenomena. I mean, we call them exceptional because we don't have phenomena. I mean, data from up to 200 years ago uh, talk about different kind of phenomena. So the territory has to be placed in a condition that it is capable of resisting phenomena like the ones we've just experienced. So zero risk does not exist in human activities, but uh, what's possible is to mitigate risk as much as possible. We've talked about a channel that was uh, conceived in the 18th century, and that worked for the flooding of last May. So we need to build works like these, which can best uh, be adapted to climate change. Uh, we can. Uh, we, we should actually find solutions for crop management uh, or the digitalization, digitalization actions, uh, digitalization and telecommunication networks. To do this, we are thinking about looking at the needs, uh, um, detecting needs from the territory, uh, but we intend to establish working groups starting from the last 10th of July. To this end, I signed agreements with uh, uh, the academic world, so with the University of Ferrara, Bologna, Modena, and Reggio Emilia, Ferrara, Florence, and I'd like to thank the chancellors of these universities uh, for um, signing these agreements. We need to rely on scientific knowledge. Uh, then we also collaborated with the um, Port Authority uh, of the Po River that can give us data in terms of future prospects uh, for a reconstruction that supports uh, uh, the society and the local territory. Uh, not only the academic world will be involved, uh, there will be other bodies. So the experience and the capacities of uh, other bodies like consortia, drainage consortia, will be also re resorted to. We would like to uh, involve people and share. Otherwise, uh, critical situations uh, like uh, this one cannot be solved. Uh, so we need to work as a team. Uh, I've talked about uh, economic resources, but this money is nothing if it is uh, not followed, uh, if it is not enacted by people who 
uh, have to possess values, values relying on friendship, on solidarity, on generosity, values uh, um, that uh, uh, groups them all towards the achievement of uh, common goals. Uh, um, I visited part of the pavilions here at the Rimini Fair, and these topics appear everywhere. I mean, looking at uh, the various uh, uh, pavilions, or for example, you would see, for example, uh, you could see images of a father with his little son going to to the mountains, and actually the dead would keep the same pace as his kid. We need to be quick, however, we need to leave no one behind, and we have to be generous. And in this respect, I would like to recall the importance of donations. On the occasion of the first region with the region, the president told me that by law, it is the commissioner who has uh, the uh, kind of uh, uh, availability of the donations. But actually, I said yes, but actually starting from those uh, uh, given to us from the 10th of July and the ones uh, that have come before will be managed by the region. And the region is basically using them for the, uh, in a way, uh, scrapping of cars. Uh, in other words, to give indemnities to those whose car has been uh, now made uh, unavailable, uh, no longer usable due to the flooding. And then there are also other donations. Uh, so contributions like those of Mr. Battistini, for example, Enel, the Foundation Cari Furli, Reale Mutua, Castepo, and many other realities. So many other institutions who are, in a way, making themselves available for us to contribute. Enel, for example, contributed as annual, but the vast majority was taken from a spontaneous act of donations of all those who work at annual. And it's very nice to, I mean, hear these things. I would like to draw to a close. Um, the Emilia-Romagna area as well as the area of Tuscany and Tuscany and Marche are particularly important. We've seen how important these territories are from an economic stance. But I would like to stress the human importance. I mean, here I'm addressing extraordinary, special people. On the occasion of my first visits here at the meeting, all those who have complained, on the occasion of my first visit, sorry, in the area of the floodings, uh, all those who complained actually have done it in a very decent way, decent way. And I'm sure that if we work together as a team, <coughs> if we uh, pursue um, credible objectives, we will uh, be able to, uh, in a way, overcome the situation and maybe transform what happened in an opportunity. Of course, I'm not saying this out of respect uh, of those uh, who are suffering. Um, the idea is that we make this region, the Emilia-Romagna region, a model of how things, these things can be faced in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, General Figliuolo. I have nothing else to add. I think that uh, we can all uh, get the best from the many contributions we listen to this evening. I would just like to uh, before we leave, uh, advise you to basically go to the bookstore of the Rimini meeting because actually Father Leo uh, has published a volume 
talking about what has happened on this occasion. So I would like to thank all our guests wholeheartedly. I think that what we have listened to is a wonderful example of what we have tried to document during this meeting. The meeting is not yet over. There are other um, sessions before the evening. Thank you very much, and I wish you a further continuation of the meeting. civiltà dell'amore, fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà. Lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo. religioso o l'esperienza religiosa è innanzitutto un fatto, un fenomeno obiettivo, un fatto reale, non è un'idea, innanzitutto non è un modo di sentire, non solo si tratta di un fatto, di un avvenimento, ma del fatto più imponente e più inestirpabile della storia dell'uomo, più imponente, più vasto, che neanche il fenomeno dell'amore dell'uomo e della donna, che neanche il fenomeno del rapporto tra genitori e figli, perché il senso religioso è un avvenimento che pone, che afferma o che ricerca l'orizzonte entro il quale acquisti senso anche il rapporto tra l'uomo e la donna, anche il rapporto tra genitori e figli. Perciò è più vasto, perfino di quelli, 